Ever wonder why it is that Fox News can lie over and over and over again, yet continue to call itself news? It's because Fox News is a corporation. And ever since that 1886 Supreme Court case of Southern Pacific Railroad versus Santa Clara County, when a rogue court reporter named John Chandler Bancroft Davis slipped corporate personhood into the legal record, the courts have ruled time and time again that corporations, since they have all the rights that actual people have, could also lie, just like people can. Actually, there was one exception. Back in 1998, a political activist named Mark Kasky sued Nike, alleging that Nike was lying to its customers by publishing in the San Francisco Examiner a letter assuring everyone that the corporation's workers around the world enjoy basic labor rights like a minimum wage, health and safety regulations, and equal opportunity employment. Kasky knew that the claim wasn't true. A 1996 audit of Nike revealed that workers in Vietnam, for example, were routinely exposed to cancer-causing chemicals that here in the United States were illegal. And a Mother Jones article later cited a Nike-funded study that found, quote, evidence of physical and verbal abuse and sexual harassment at nine of its contract factories in Indonesia, end of quote. After realizing that he and thousands of other Nike customers were lied to and were buying Nike products under false assumptions, Kasky took the corporation to court. And in 2002, Kasky won his case before the California Supreme Court, which ruled that Nike did indeed break laws against unfair competition and false advertising. But rather than paying the fine, Nike appealed, took the case to the Supreme Court. And the high court actually agreed to hear the case in 2003. Nike claimed that as a corporate person, it was entitled to freedom of speech, which means freedom to lie. Kasky's lawyers shot back and even referenced my book, Unequal Protection, to the Supreme Court justices in an effort to prove that the 1886 corporate personhood case was a sham, that the Supreme Court never ruled that corporations are people, that instead that rogue court reporter I told you about had hoodwinked the nation. That's when something strange happened. After hearing the argument against corporate personhood taken from my book by Kasky's lawyers, Chief Justice Re William Rehnquist suddenly dismissed the case, basically saying, oops, we made a mistake in agreeing to hear it in the first place. So the lower court's decision was upheld. Nike lost the case and settled with Kasky, agreeing to make a seven-figure gift to help sweatshop workers around the world. It was actually a rare, a rare win against corporate personhood. But it was short-lived. Because just as Nike was coughing up the cash, Fox News was about to, or Fox Corporation, was about to mount its own defense of a corporation's right to lie in that very same year. In 1998, two investigative reporters, Jane Aker and Steve Wilson, working for a local Fox affiliate, produced a series on how a synthetic hormone known as bovine growth hormone, or BG8, routinely given to cattle down in Florida, well, all over the country, in fact, could be causing cancer in America and not in Europe, where it had been banned. But since the local Fox station, owned by Rupert Murdoch's News Corp, forced Aker and Wilson to rewrite the story several times, until finally it was just an outright lie that was pretty much consistent with Monsanto's PR. Even though Europeans have banned the stuff here, you know, we shouldn't worry, we should just be happy. But Aker and Wilson refused to tone it down. They believed as journalists it was their job to tell the public the truth about what's in their milk. So the Fox TV station fired them. And Aker and Wilson fired back by suing the Fox TV outlet for wrongful termination. And a jury of six of their peers unanimously agreed with Aker and Wilson and awarded them $425,000 in damages. The jury found that, quote, Fox acted intentionally and deliberately to falsify or distort the plaintiff's news reporting on BGH. End of quote. Case closed. Not so fast. In 2003, just as the Supreme Court was dismissing the Nike case, Fox News was appealing its own case. And sure enough, that year, an appeals court reversed the lower court's ruling and claimed that, as a corporation, Fox had the right to lie. And not only that, it had the right to force its reporters to lie with the threat of firing them if they don't comply. That decision still stands today. Which means right now, Fox can tell its reporters to lie to protect corporate and political friends and interests, and those reporters must comply or else they'll get fired. And by the way, it's not just Fox. This is true of every media corporation in America. And as we've seen in the recently 
leaked emails uncovered by Media Matters that show Fox News executives telling anchors to, for example, call the public option a government option, because it sounds better for Republicans, and to inject skepticism into every report about global warming. Fox News is up to their ears in the Lion game. And yet they still can call themselves news. Everyone knows, well, almost everyone knows, that Rush Limbaugh isn't news. And Rush Limbaugh himself doesn't call his program a news program. Heck, everyone knows the big picture with Tom Hartman isn't news. I don't claim to be either. I do opinion. But Fox News is in the same business as Rush Limbaugh, basically carrying the water for the Republican Party and corporate interests, yet it calls itself news. Historically, from the 1930s until the 1980s, when a media organization called itself news, it had to be free of bias. It had to actually be real news. Then Reagan blew up the Fairness Doctrine in 1987, the rule that required self-proclaimed news outlets to report straight news, and opened the floodgates of distortion and infotainment. And the courts then piled down by ruling that media corporations have the absolute right to lie to their viewers and force their reporters to do so. Now can you see why our news media in America is in complete and utter disrepair and why nobody believes what they see or hear anymore? As I speak, Republicans are pushing for a constitutional amendment to balance the budget. But that's not what America needs. Our nation actually needs a constitutional amendment stripping corporations of their personhood and thus their right to lie to us. Then maybe we can once and for all force Fox to drop the word news from its name and call the network what it really is, as Roger Ailes envisioned it back in the 1970s when he worked in the Nixon administration, GOP TV. The Gulf Coast shrimping industry took a major hit last year from the BP oil spill. But this year the shrimp grounds are clean, the fishermen are back in business, as early show contributor Spike Mendelson tells us. Good morning, Spike. Good morning. How's it going? Good. Good, good. So yeah, I mean, you know, there's a huge misconception about how safe it is to eat the shrimp and the seafood from uh, Louisiana and especially New Orleans. Yeah. So uh, we took a, a trip down there just to kind of resource some shrimp and see what was going on. Take a look. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine. New Orleans, the jewel of the Gulf Coast, a city steeped in history, culture, music, and of course my favorite, food. Much of the Crescent City's famous cuisine, gumbos, po' boys, and antufes, comes from the Gulf of Mexico. Louisiana seafood by far is the main dish for all the restaurants in the state. This is their livelihood. I mean, this really, really is. It's, it's everything we do. This is a huge business for Louisiana. It's a $2.4 billion business. But the multi-billion dollar seafood industry is still recovering from last summer's massive BP oil spill. Over the last year, these Gulf waters have gone through extensive testing. This area is the most tested seafood in the United States, uh, especially over the last year. Steve Wilson is part of NOAA's seafood inspection program. Not one sample has entered the market that was tainted with either dispersants or oil. Despite rigorous examination, Americans are still weary of Gulf seafood. The biggest challenge we're still faced with is the perception issues. 69% of Americans are still concerned about eating seafood from the Gulf of Mexico. The problem affects local fishermen like Pete Garica. He's a third generation stripper who has seen his fair share of adversity. Katrina destroyed his home, but not his livelihood. Pete took us to the Gulf, where he makes his living shrimping these waters. Oh, I see some nice, some nice shrimp in there. Eight, nine, ten. This seafood coming from this lake and this part of the world is 100% edible uh, and safe and healthy and clean and as fresh as you're going to get it. I take my life on it. One thing for sure, this is the freshest and the cleanest catch that you can get. Buyers, however, are still cautious. Uh, my markets are still off, roughly, I'd say, about between 35 and 45 percent. Fortunately, the oil spill hasn't scared away restaurant owners, like chef John Besh, who runs August, a big, easy institution. What's going on? Besh has always been an ambassador of Gulf seafood. Our seafood has really never been better. 
we got right to work on a classic New Orleans dish. But it's still one of my favorite dishes. One of the first dishes I've ever made in my life, shrimp creole. I'm not even here 10 minutes and Beth just putting me to work already. Check it out. Would you toss that for me, brother? I'm totally tossing. Yeah, put me to work. All right, that's just, Best. you know, chili flakes. The chili flakes Hot all over pepper. this. It does not get any more soulful or better than that. Yeah. So in New Orleans, I'm loving it. With meals like this, it's hard to imagine anyone being able to resist Gulf Coast shrimp. Spike here is hungry. Mm -hmm. They're delicious. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. And Chef Besh believes there's an important lesson to be learned beyond the Gulf Coast shore. We all need to start eating a lot more domestically. Right. If we do that, we're supporting all these localized economies all across the, all across the country sure. that really depend on that. You've seen it, you know, once, these, once we lose this culture, our uh, coastal community, they'll never come back. Exactly. You know, you were pretty good. You should think about opening up your own place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. You know, he's right. We, we, do, we import a lot of seafood. Yeah, we import about 80% of the seafood that we consume here in America is imported. Yeah. Uh, and the funny part about that is, is that only 0.1% is actually inspected. Really? Hmm. So you can imagine. I mean, the whole idea here is also is like the misperception that, you know, everyone has on the seafood in New Orleans and that it's tainted. I mean, it's such a resilient state over the last five years, Katrina, all the other hurricanes, yeah. the BP oil spill. You know what I mean, they really need America to, to kind of to help them help a hand. How know? do you know that you are then? I mean, how do you know this stuff came from the Gulf Coast? Just, you know, ask your chefs, you know, ask where you know, people are buying their seafood in the supermarkets and just try to buy as local as you can. Buy locally, and sometimes the price will actually even be better if you get it from something local because it didn't have so long to transport. Absolutely, and I mean, most importantly, you're going to be supporting Louisiana, yeah. which needs it the most right now. All the families, all the people that are, are still there, kind of trying to make it happen, really need us to help out. Renewed sense of optimism down there, too. I mean, I know it's only been a year, and they did take a, a significant hit. Sure. Uh, but they're feeling better about the way things they're are going. They're feeling better, and I have to tell you, I've, you know, it was my first time down in New Orleans, and the people were absolutely amazing, yeah. uh, you know, very informative. And, and, you know, it, it's sad on what's going on there because there's just a bad perception. Are you going to taste some of the food? Okay, I'm going to try some. I mean, some. you got you to get in. It's a little early. I've got to come on. It's not that I'm afraid of it. It's just that it's so early. Come Spike. on. Okay. She's really, she doesn't like to eat a lot Let of food me get in on or this. drink scotch before 9 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> it's really bizarre. It's, it's one of those weird things. Spike. Right. We're you. talking <laughs> about shrimp okay. here. You have to have the shrimp. Oh, just like seafood. Have a wonderful. U.S. Mississippi runoff expands Gulf dead zone. Now, the BP oil disaster last year and the corrects it can't have anything to do with this Gulf dead zone. Uh, they're blaming the flooding in the Mississippi Valley, of course, um, pouring out into the Gulf of Mexico for the huge fish kills in this big um, oxygen deprived dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, so, en so enjoy your sniff test safe seafood.